Hello, my fellow dirty gardeners. I am in the field today. <laughs> my name is Iron uh, Dirty Dragon, and um, the goal of today's video is going to be about showing you guys some of our native edibles, which are um, often you find them in your garden as weeds, sometimes um, out when you're hiking. Um, but I'm pretty sure you'll recognize at least some of them. So if you're a weed eater, <laughs> you have a little bit more access to uh, extra food. Um, I consider myself a little bit lucky because I grew up with, um, my stepdad is um, part First Nations and also kind of a woodsman, a mountain man, I guess you might say. And uh, so he taught us a lot about foraging and some of the yummy foods that are out there. Um, some of them are yummy, some of them not so much. <laughs> Wanted to stop here, I'm beside a really busy road, but this is a thimbleberry flower. And since it's not in season, I can't show you what the berry is, so I'll just um, post a picture um, for the uh, in the video, and you can see what the berries look like. When I was growing up, we used to, of course, put them on our fingertips and then eat them. <laughs> um, these guys grow kind of rampant in my garden. They've got nice, nice fuzzy leaves. They actually smell really nice, too. Very fragrant. Um, yeah, so that's one of our edible uh, wild berries. So this one right here is called Ribwort Plantain. And apparently these little buds are edible before they open up. Um, I am going to give one a go and see what it's like. <laughs> Wish me luck because I'm not a rabbit. I don't like it. It's kind of like, it's kind of like really green popcorn, if that makes any sense. I don't know. I don't like it at all, but I can see maybe weed eaters liking it, if you're used to that kind of crap. <laughs> Apparently the leaves are edible as well, and uh, <clears throat> have to be prepared a certain way, so don't just go and pick them and eat them, because blah. I wouldn't recommend eating it at all, but it's edible. So there you go. I'm still trying to get that taste of um, plantain. <laughs> There's an interesting aftertaste though of walnut, which is actually not too bad, except for the fact that it's attached to everything else. But I just spotted something else next to the road here, and that's wild rose. And I believe the petals are edible, the hips are edible. I'm not sure about the leaves, but um, I'm going to show you because there's a really lovely patch right here. Oh, okay, there's nothing like the smell of wild roses, I tell ya. I'm going to try eating some of the petals. <laughs> Hopefully this will be a better experience than the plantain. These lovely ferns here are bracken ferns. And they're edible when they first come up as fiddleheads. Um, they're past that now, obviously, as you can see. They have a really strong, thick stem that has a kind of a bulb at the bottom of it. Me and my brothers used to, um, to pull them out and play swords because they're pretty tough. Really beautiful fern. And they go a nice shade of, um, tawny gold in the fall. But anyway, so fiddleheads. Brackenfern. This one here is sheep sorrel. This is the one that I mentioned earlier that uh, we called sour grass. It um, often grows in really crappy, dry soil that's hard packed, like next to roads and stuff like that. Um, or, you know, in my garden. <laughs> the leaves are really, really tasty. They're kind of like a uh, a really sour Granny Smith, so more sour than normal, but um, 
like really packed with flavor. So very, very tasty. Very A little bit of citrus as well in there. So very tasty with uh, something that might be a little bit sweeter or milder. Um, anyway, yeah, so this is actually pretty tasty. And apparently you can eat the seeds. I don't know. I've never tried it. I can't imagine having a mouthful of these seeds, really. But I guess it's not that different from quinoa. Okay, so here's um, here's another one called Epilobium, which is a relative of fireweed. Apparently this is also edible, all of it, raw. Uh, and this is the one that you can use the um, roots as a thickener for soups and stuff. Um, I'm going to try some. <laughs> Just make sure there's no bugs on there because I will throw up. <laughs> nope. Nope. Um, at first it's really good. <clears throat> and then there's a really bitter taste. Aftertaste. Um, it's too bad because the, the first taste, when you first start chewing on it, is really fresh and mild. I, bleh, no. So this is chickweed. All parts are edible apparently, flowers and leaves. Um, just, I am going to try it. <laughs> um, when you pick it, it smells like um, sugar snap peas. It has a really lovely sweet fresh scent. Um, my allergies are going off so I'm constantly sniffling. Apologies for that but I'm going to try this and uh, <laughs> um, I'm still sort of working on <laughs> that little bit of uh, room X over there, but we'll give this a go. Okay, that's, that's reasonable. <laughs> At first it tastes fine, like very mild. Mm. There's a little bit of a weird aftertaste. It's kind of um, um, alkaline, maybe. Like wants to take the skin off of my like when you you know when you like get a little bit of a banana peel, and your tongue gets kind of fuzzy. But it's pretty decent. I think mixed in with other salad greens, it would be very flavorful. Um, I deem this one edible. <laughs> Another weed that's edible is dandelion. And um, I'm not going to try this one. Oh, maybe I'll just try the tip of a leaf. Nope. <laughs> oh, God, you guys. Oh, how do you eat that crap? Oh, it's awful. <laughs> Next is clover. I have a lot of clover in my garden. Uh, this is just the white stuff, so it's probably not as tasty as the pink stuff. But I'm going to try some of the greens anyway. Um, the flowers... I don't know, I don't see any flowers. Maybe they come later, I'm not sure. I'm not as familiar with them. Anyway, let's give this a go. Oh, hot damn. That's yummy. Ooh. <laughs> and then not quite so much, but edible for sure. Yeah. Um, the texture is super um, thick, um, fibrous, like dry almost. Um, the flavor is very sweet, especially to start with. And then there's a little bit of a kind of a barnyard flavor. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I could definitely smell, like, I don't know, cow <laughs> after eating this. But yeah, I, I think that's pretty tasty, too. <laughs> this is plantain, plantago. I uh, really like growing it, actually. It's very pretty. Um, it's got spikes of uh, flowers that are like a candlestick, almost. Although there are other kinds. Um, I have a red one in the front, which is really quite ornamental. But I grew from seed just to see what it would look like. They're little hairy dudes. And I'm going to try the young leaves are edible. And then, oh, there was something else interesting about it. Something about the seeds being ground into flour, I think. 
Hi, Flower. <laughs> Did you hear your name? Um, I'm going to try baby leaf because it's only the young leaves, apparently. And I guess, like, you know, everybody says it's medicinal. I'm not going to get into that, but um, I'm going to try one of the young leaves. I'm nervous about this one. I'm not even going to put it in my mouth. Not liking it very much. It's not terrible, but it tastes medicinal, kind of. And I don't like the hairy crap on it. <clears throat> I don't like hairy food. <laughs> no. This one right here is licorice fern. Usually grows on the sides of rocks, which is why I have it in a sort of a rocky, dry area here. Um, I don't know if it would do well if it was getting a ton of moisture, um, even though it's a fern. I, I, maybe a lot of moisture, but steep drainage. Anyway, I was going to show you um, what part is edible. These rhizomes, roots down here, these guys, the young ones are better. A little... The, th the thinner they are, the more tasty they are. If they're really, really thick, they're kind of bitter. But if you bite into them and just get a little bit of the oil, a little bit of the sap on your tongue and let it sit there for a minute, it tastes very strongly of black licorice. I love it. Grew up munching on it. Um, if you get too much in your mouth, though, it kind of starts to taste pretty nasty. So you really just want to taste, like just touch it to your tongue and let the oil kind of spread over your tongue a little bit and uh, just enjoy it for the flavor. I don't know if I would eat it like food, but I don't know, maybe that's something that people do. <laughs> maybe if it's prepared a certain way, but anyway, it's edible. The, the rhizomes are edible. Once they get really chunky and stuff like this, though, they're no they're no good to eat. They're no good to taste. Definitely go for the smaller, more delicate new for, the new the newer ones. And so that's licorice fern. Okay, back to my cleavers plant, my sticky weed. <laughs> Apparently, this shit is edible. I I don't think I'd want to put that in my mouth um, because of the hairs on it and and just like the texture would be nasty. I mean, if it sticks to... I don't know. Why would you... Anyway. Um, uh, apparently you can use it in soups. Why? Why would you put this shit in soup? There's so many yummy things you can put in soup. I guess if you have, like, water and you're out in the middle of freaking nowhere and you want something other than just water. This is Anaphilus margaritacea, which is um, pearly everlasting. And the young plants are supposedly edible. I'm, I'm not really inclined to try it. Uh, this might be for the more advanced weed eaters. <laughs> um, did I mention it's called Pearly Everlasting? This is the flower that looks like it's always dry. Quite pretty white wildflower. It grows by like ditches and stuff like that on the hillsides and, and things. I grow it just because I think it's pretty, but uh, I won't eat it. So I just found out um, yesterday that fir tips, like the new growth on the fir tree, are edible. And I tried some just a few minutes ago. And uh, all I can say is fucking nasty. But I'm going to show you what it looks like, and I'm going to try it again so you can at exactly how nasty it is. Okay. This is a fir tree. You can tell because the needles are flat. They radiate only on a horizontal plane. How technical is that, hey? And apparently when they're just little teeny tiny leaves like this, I'm actually going to try a bigger one like this. I tried one of these little bud ones, and it was kind of like eating, uh, well, pine salt, actually, amazingly. <laughs> so I'm going to try eating a bigger one, like this size, and see 
Oh, come on. Camera won't focus. Let's see what that tastes like. It smells good. I'm kind of nervous because the last time I ate one, it was so awful. <laughs> Okay, that was that was a little bit better than the smaller one I had. It still tastes like eating pine salt. A little bit of citrus in there, but um, ugh. ah, oh no! There's so many things out there that are better to eat. I would not, I would not choose to eat this, but. I've, I've read also that, um, I'm not sure which conifer, so you might want to look this up, but that some conifers, you can use the uh, needles when they are, like, cooked to add a little bit of a citrusy, salty taste to things as a herb, but I don't know which kind, so look it up. Okay, so that's my first video about edible wild plants. Most of them are natives, a few of them are introduced. I um, <laughs> I tried a few when I was out in the field and uh, forgot to record, or I, actually I think I, I thought I was recording, so I was just yakking at my phone and it wasn't recording, <laughs> which is very disappointing because now it means I have to go out and find these other things again. But in the summertime, if we ever fucking get summer, I think it's probably like 12 degrees right now. Anyway, um, that's, that's, I'm just, yeah. If we ever get summer, I'm going to go out and I'm going to get some more of the more common summer weeds and, and, um, and edibles and, uh, natives, <laughs> um, things like salsa fee and chicory and, and a bunch of other things like that, that you don't find, um, growing at this time of the year yet. So there's, there's part one of edibles. Peace out.